Andy Johnson. I am the author of Academic Writing Process and Product. This is from Chapter 11, First and Last Paragraphs. This chapter describes, this is a good introductory paragraph. <clears throat> the introductory paragraph has two purposes. First, it gives you a sense of what the paper is about, and then it should give you a sense of the structure of what is to come. This paper is about cats. That gives us a sense of what the paper is about. Below are described A, B, C, and D, and each one of these then would become a section. APA, 7th edition, we use a letter within parentheses and a comma between each one. Action research, this is a little bit longer, but three elements related to data analysis are presented. Accuracy and credibility. Now here, again, the letters, but I have three or more things as one of my points. Simply putting a comma here would be confusing. So in that case, we use a semicolon. Gives me a sense of what the paper is about and describes the three sections that are to come. All right. Gives you a sense of what the paper is about describes the sections that are to come. Now, shapes thinking, okay, even within a section, you do that. And this is because academic writing, and you get a sense of the section. Shapes thinking, and you get a sense of the section, all right? That is how we use introductory paragraphs. And again, an introductory paragraphs gives you a sense of what the paper is about or what the section is about. And then seriation is used to describe each section. The last paragraph should be used to summarize or highlight focal ideas. You shouldn't be introducing new material in the last paragraph. If you're writing uh, uh, a book or a paper with more than one section, you could use it to link section. But in an article or a lit review, generally, the last paragraph should be used to summarize. All right, generally, now chapter 12, paragraph. A paragraph, a group of sentences organized around a similar idea. Paragraphs are friends. They create a physical break between idea and the next. Now look at this big blob of text. That's hard to read. We have no sense of what it is. It also helps us organize our thinking big blob of text, blah, blah, blah. That's hard to read. No one likes to do that. Now notice what happens when I break that blob of text into paragraphs. Every time I start a new idea, I start a new paragraph. Much easier to read and it helps me organize my thinking as a writer. I'm starting a new idea. I start a new paragraph. All right. Now if I really want to be cool, I can include my headings and subheadings here. And I've described that uh, previously. This is the level one heading, boldface, capitalize, uh, skip a line and indent, level two heading, boldface, italicize, level three, indent, and you see. And again, I like using headings and subheadings. It helps me see the structure. And I'm reviewing an idea. This would be a level three heading. It would be indent, boldface, Capitalize period start on the first uh, start on the first uh, the same sentence. All right, you get the idea. When to start a new paragraph? Every paragraph should have a focus or central idea. The 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 idea I grew up with that the first line conveys a topic sentence. That's not true. Sometimes in paragraphs, there is no topic sentence. Absolutely, but a paragraph should have a central focus. It's a group of similar ideas. When you find yourself wandering off into a new idea, start a new paragraph. When in doubt, create a new paragraph. Over-paragraphed writing is much easier to read than under-paragraphed writing. The one kind of rule of thumb is that you want to avoid one sentence paragraphs. And I'm writing about writing writer's block and you can see I'm starting a new idea and I create a new paragraph. When in doubt, start a new paragraph. 
avoid conceptual leaps within a paragraph. This is very confusing, or I call it the kitchen sink paragraph, where you just have a whole bunch of ideas. A paragraph should be a group of similar ideas. So if you find yourself throwing a bunch of ideas, instead of throwing a bunch of different ideas in one paragraph, how about throw one paragraph in and describe and explain that idea, then start a new paragraph, describe and explain that idea. You don't want these conceptual leaps within a paragraph. Even between paragraphs, it becomes confusing. All right. Creativity is a valuable process. Creativity, all right, this is conceptual leap. So instead of one short paragraph with a bunch of different ideas, I take one idea, I explain it, I go to the next idea, I explain it, I go to the next idea, I explain it. What is the appropriate length of a paragraph? Long enough to develop the idea, and short enough to prevent the reader from being bored or confused. More complicated ideas require larger paragraphs, less complicated ideas, smaller paragraphs. Academic writing. Keep it as concise as possible. Nothing sounds quite so silly as someone trying to sound smart using big words and long sentences. That's horrible to try to read. So oftentimes, what you don't include in a paragraph or academic writing is just as important as what you do include. If you include too much, it gets confusing. So, avoid redundancy within a paragraph. If you find yourself making the same point more than once, take it out. In academic writing, the most effective way to make a strong case for your particular point of view by using objective language, even though you're positioning, all right, so you want to keep it as simple as possible. Do not have any redundancy within a paragraph. That's why when you, um, you go from whole to part, put all your ideas on paper, but when you are editing, go through, make your sentences as absolutely as short and concise as possible. Make your paragraphs as absolutely short and concise as possible. No redundancy within a paragraph, no redundancy within the paper. Paragraphs are our friends. Embrace them. A paragraph is a group of similar ideas. When you start a new idea, start a new paragraph.